I wanted to start to get some more videos out and uh, kind of refute um, Ryan Bosner and some others. Uh, you know, I read through his book and found uh, some of it helpful. The, the beginning information, the information that's like, uh, you know, Ella Fitzgerald shattering glass or some of the things you need to say to people when they're getting used to this idea of residence. Uh, a car driving at a certain speed um, will is a vibration in the older cars uh, or for worn tires or all that. You know, you go and you go a little bit higher and there's no vibration. You go a little bit slower and there's no vibration. There's only vibration at a certain point. That, that is the resonance. Um, so why are all these people calling themselves writing machines? Why is the silver pulsar, you know, on YouTube calling itself a writing machine? It, it doesn't make any sense. It's not right. Um, why are these uh, dug coils calling themselves writing machines? They're obviously not. They're not crane machines either. Uh, limited to 22,000, or uh, that, that's too high, 2,200 pulses a second. That's because you have that this giant, this giant line of coil, and it can't get through there and, and come back out, shut all, all the way on and shut all the way off fast enough. Um, and that, that's one of the things I'm going to get to uh, when I define, you know, what what can work and what can't work. And these are based on uh, laboratory findings, not based on uh, personal success stories, although. You know, I've got numerous ones uh, of those on my channel, um, some of which have, you know, uh, been done here in the office and some of which, you know, I've taught other people to do on, you know, their their home computers. Uh, so most of these people don't have research at all. Um, the electromagnetic field uh, can't, if it's an electromagnetic field, like the true right, you know, I had that uh, that probe, you know, close to it. You get far away from it; it's still there. It's a decaying magnetic field, of course, but uh, that field can't distinguish between uh, healthy and unhealthy tissues. It can't distinguish between bacteria uh, in your body. Um, that's because it's ever present. I say that because it's ever present. Um, con conversely. Um, like a P3 Pro or very good frequency emitting device, uh, radiant wise, uh, there's a field, you know, on, on the glass. It's there and it's very small. Uh, smaller than a uh, fluorescent light bulb, say. You get an inch away from it and it's, it doesn't exist anymore, but then you could measure it again on your skin. Um, and that's, you know, when I talk about the scalar, that, that's one of the, uh, the characteristics of scalar is that it, it can't be measured in between uh, the transmitting and the pickup spots. Um, hmm. Yeah, there's uh, the GB4000 that I tested, and you know, I was playing around with it. I could not feel uh, any fundamental frequencies. The fundamental frequencies are simply that which you put into the machine. Uh, you enter 740 or 880, those are very low frequencies, uh, not extremely low frequencies, Under they're not under 100 hertz, but they should be perceivable because they would be audible. You put 800 hertz into like a square gen program or Audacity or any of those, you'll be able to hear it. Therefore, you should be able to feel it because the peaks are far enough apart. Same like a P3 Pro, you can't hear it now, it's doing ultrasound. But you turn it down to four or 5,000 hertz, 800 hertz, that can be heard. So I want to talk about three things that make this work. Um, one is uh, the power. The uh, power with uh, the PFG is stronger than... Um, get this in here stronger than uh, any TENS unit that I've seen. Um, and it's, it's very perceptible at uh, low frequency. You know, again, in that audible spectrum, you're going to feel it if it's on high power. Uh, and that's going to be too much for you if it's, you know, towards that 800 hertz range. 
there's also power decay. That's that's in the same first part. Uh, and the power decay uh, happens for several reasons. Uh, one, a coil can heat up and it can dissipate um, and get weaker. So it's hitting it. It might hit a target at first. Then after you've had the machine on for long enough, due to power supply issues or capacitor issues, the power falls. Um, so what was once energized and you're doing that work of resonating it, well, it's just like the, the car shuts off, you know, and it's, it's not there anymore. The resonance isn't affecting the tissue. Um, but the power is not important if you don't have the, the second characteristic of speed, um, the switching speed. Uh, from off to on. If you have something like, like a gigantic coil um, or a silver pulser, calling them out too, you're not going to get inside the cell. Uh, those those frequency rates can't get inside the cell. They need to be 20 microseconds um, or less. Uh, the global wellness is something like 750 um, microseconds. The true rife was along sometimes, you know, 200 microseconds. And I didn't get to test uh, the GB4000, but, you know, running radio frequencies is totally unnecessary. I believe it's dangerous because I burnt my hand, <laughs> you know. And uh, the person who brought it in has, has burnt herself as well. Um, the third characteristic, after we, you know, we need to turn it on fast enough to get inside the cell. We need to keep on hitting it with enough power. And, but that's all assuming, you know, the third factor that we have. Um, the right frequency, you know, where are these frequencies coming from? Are they public CAFL lists? Um, but then you start to look at, oh, okay, 740 hertz, so it's going to be good for everything. 880 hertz, uh, I think 124 is one of them. Um, Central, we've got these frequencies, uh, but does the machine have inherent ac accuracy? Uh, why are they good frequencies? Uh, and and a, lot, a lot of these machines, uh, beam ray is one of these things, uh, pulse technology zones, and they're supposed to send me a video. But what else? The, the True Rife had horrible, horrible frequency accuracy, making. Um, their galvanic skin response tester totally useless. Uh, and I felt so bad after I did that because of the electromagnetism involved that I, I wouldn't even bother with it. Um, I don't want to bother with, uh, you know, saying, okay, you responded at 550 when the computer says it's doing 550, but it's really doing 600, you know, 38. And uh, that, that device is pulsing on and off. So there's a, there's a two hertz pulse, and when it turned on, it was trying to attain uh, the frequency that you put into it. Um, very scary device. Um, that I think that brings me to the next thing I wanted to talk about. You know, are these things potentially dangerous? Well, so you got you got a cell phone, and uh, you. Cell phones have electromagnetic fields, and what are some other characteristics? They have frequency switching. Um, they have dirty magnetism. There's power that turns on, turns off. You know, you send a text message. There's power there. You transmit that out to the tower, you know, to go to your friend, um, and then it turns off. Well, doesn't that sound like a true right, you know, or uh, a multi-wave oscillator, say? Uh, you call someone, and that's going to be a different a set of uh, frequencies altogether. Um, and also, you know, being closer or farther away, if you're, say, you're driving, um, you're going to be closer and farther away from towers. And you'll you'll use less power um, when you're closer to the tower, and you use more power um, when you're farther away. And if you're in your car, you're always going to use more power, but it's still going to be variable power. So multi-wave oscillators, when you're dealing with uh, strong magnetics, uh, actually dangerous. And we know that from, from cell phones. You know, you hate cell phones in this new age movement and you love anything that says right on it, even though it's an electromagnetic, uh, device. And that's, that's a principle that it's supposed to work on. And you're assuming that your disease is taking you down so far 
was going to be uh, weaker than your body, which is, you know, incredibly weak. It was weak enough to uh, submit to this disease, whatever your disease is, or whatever the person that uh, that you know um, that's using a rice machine is suffering from. So, you know, you think of it like, like a cell phone, you think of it like a microwave. Um, microwaves use radio frequencies, too, by the way. So if you have a radio frequency generator that's constantly going, um, another part about the GB4000 is that when you get above 10 million hertz, you need special electronic connections. You can't just use banana plugs um, to generate uh, frequencies over, I think, I don't know the exact number, but I know over 10 million hertz, you need something more uh, specialized than BNC cable, which is doing a lot better job than a banana plug. Um, and then you've got banana plug to banana plug to banana plug <laughs> to get this frequency into your hand. And so it's banana plug, banana plug, banana plug, and then you have rod handle. Um, and you all know how your hands are, are built, you know, and, you know, why aren't we like a gecko? We can't climb up walls and stuff. Well, our, our skin doesn't form to uh, surfaces very well. And so then, you know, those our skin doesn't form. It doesn't have points of contact uh, like a gecko or something like that. And that's why you use the TENS unit pads to transmit more electricity um, with the same current, really. Um, but the, the imperceivable nature of the fundamental frequencies, even at low frequencies, make it, you know, useless in my book. Um, the electromagnetism from the other devices, say it's a silver pulsar, which is a, a do-it-yourself project, if anything. There's no way you buy one of those things. You don't buy a multi-wave oscillator for five to eighteen thousand dollars because um, electronic gadgets for the evil genius. You know, if you if you don't know how to buy it, you can uh, commission someone uh, to build it for you for you know hundred dollars, two hundred dollars, you know, even five. You know, um, but you just don't you don't pay someone uh, so much money to to build something that is potentially harmful and should be labeled for experimental use only. Um, uh, some, some other examples of, you know, why the radio frequency is dangerous is that uh, you're like, oh, radio frequency, that's like what I get in my radio. That, that's correct. Um, but you're not transmitting from your radio. You're picking that up. So, you know, thanks to the FCC, we constantly have uh, radio communications always going through us. There's interesting stuff about that, you know, if it's inside us, you know, do we own it? <laughs> but back to the point at hand and getting away from copyright stuff. Uh, when you're transmitting the stuff, the people who are transmitting it, they're in the radio station. The station is not connected to on top of, they're not transmitting right from their, uh, right from their computers and their microphones because it's dangerous. Uh, if you're ham radio, shortwave radio, operator, um, they, you, you transmit when it's outside, and the reason for that is because those radio wave transmissions are uh, not good for you to be in front of all day, and they're especially not good for you to sleep with at night. Um, and, and that's another thing that people can do wrong, too, is uh, they, they fall asleep with these things. Um, and the fields that are supposed to be present at night are you know, very small, Amounts of power, and they're 7.83. You know the Schumann resonance. Uh, you can find this all over the place. And sleeping with, you know, high fields, uh, high speed fields, it, it's not good for you. You, you need to sleep. Um, you need to get your brain into the right rhythm. And you, you do that with this stuff. This can help you fall asleep. But you need to be running, you know, um, resonances of uh, the, Sch the Schumann resonance and some some higher number. Of lower harmonics, the 7.83 is too high to be in delta range of sleep. So I hope this uh, helps you cut through some of the things. Um, oh, you know, back to the back to the frequency accuracy. Uh, pulse technology is proven up with candida. You know, these large colonies. You're getting these large colonies of candida to absorb. Uh, quite a bit of energy. Um, so what does that mean to viruses? Viruses are tiny.
compared to colonies of candida, which are you know visible to the eye. Um, so they, they would need less energy than say uh, candida. Someone someone asked, you know, well, would this work for my virus? Yeah, I, you know, I can't guarantee it, but if it works for candida, at least in Romania, um, and according to some people's blood work. Then, then you just go to figure. Um, there's a good book. Uh, even if you have like a, a fairly bad device, uh, viruses can be dispatched with it. Uh, the ultraviolet devices are good. Um, seen those work. Uh, even some of the global wellness and that stuff that that can work with viruses. Uh, the book Hepatitis C Cured by Johnny Delirious. I, I got that one. He. He goes over in depth, you know, what he did. Uh, he doesn't name the, the machine in um, the text, but I, I found it out, I think, from his website. But yeah, this this needs to seriously be looked at, and you need you need the information. Um, Brian Rosner's book, or Ryan Bosner, I don't know, I don't care to even say the guy's name right. Uh, Pulse technology stuff, why isn't it in there? Because they want to send them a, a machine for free. You know, and then you see all these, they're like, oh, okay, great, you know, right machines are going to help me. What do I buy? And he recommends a bunch of crap. And it's not crap for any other reason other than it cannot work on the same principles and maintain safety. Um, so when you think of these things as, either being the same as radio waves, or you just look at the electromagnetic spectrum and say, uh, now what do, what do we need? Do we need visible light? Uh, okay, let's use radio waves. That's that's not good for us. Or let's use things that act like cell phones. That's not good for you either. Um, so you, you hit a point, you hit a specific target with an accurate machine uh, with the right power, and it doesn't matter pulse technologies or not, but it's the only one I know of right now that does that. Accuracy, power, overcoming biological impedance, that's, that's everything. And being able to calculate those correct frequencies, and there's patents out there, or pats, there's a patent out there to calculate frequencies for DNA destruction. You know, and take that for what you will. But it, so it is known and they also state in that patent that, well, these certain devices cannot do high frequencies. They can't do the 150 to 300,000 hertz it takes to knock most of these microorganisms out. So they're going to divide the frequency in half and up times to where it might have to get down below 2,200 hertz or 1,000 hertz to, to do it accurately. Well, then how many times do you need to double it? And then what degree of accuracy do you need then? You need a ton of accuracy. If you're 0.1 hertz off, you're, you're way off. Uh, you know, you're 5 or 10 hertz off when you get to uh, 300,000. So that, that wouldn't work. Um, that's assuming you have the right frequency anyways, which almost no one, almost nobody does. They're just going off the CAFL stuff. They've never seen any of Bright's notes. Um, it's all like all new age mysticism, but some of it's some of it's not. But finding the real stuff seems to be a chore. Yeah, thanks for uh, listening to this rant. I just I was googling right machines and just saw a bunch of crap again. So I wanted to wanted to set things right for the ten people that are going to watch this video, or maybe twenty in the next couple of days. <laughs>